I want to follow the Honourable Member for South and West in just raising the issue uh, initially of um, un unavo avoidable deaths as a consequence of epilepsy. This is an issue which doesn't get enough uh, focus in this House. Uh, it causes a great deal of distress for obvious reasons to many, many families. There are 21 epilepsy deaths each week in the United Kingdom. And the organisation SUDEP Action, which su supports bereaved families, does an excellent job in not only supporting those families, but highlighting those issues. And what we want from the government on this specific issue is an inquiry into avoidable epilepsy deaths, a funded annual risk check for all people with ep epilepsy, uh, local training so that all the frontline professionals have a greater awareness of this issue and a willingness which hasn't happened over a number of years for government ministers to actually meet with SUDEP Action and relevant members of parliament to address some of these issues. In my constituency there was a remarkable woman called Lynn McGough who ten years ago lost her daughter Samantha Ahern to an avoidable uh, epilepsy uh, death. She's raised more than £45,000 for SUDEP Action and she's a great advocate and campaigner for the cause and for many other causes. And her courage, and there are many people like this, who turn personal tragedy into campaigns are an inspiration uh, to us uh, all. Uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, as we speak here today, there is a very real risk that the English Football League are about to give Bury Football Club notice that they're going to have to leave the league. So I want to use this speech today to say to the English Football League, uh, will they sit down with myself, the Member of Parliament for Bury North, uh, and the club to do everything that we can, this is, this is a whole series of administrative issues, uh, to prevent that happening. This would be a devastating blow to the town uh, of Bury. Uh, when we come back, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, I hope to be in a position to confirm that we have submitted a bid uh, to the Government for a a uh, school, a new school, a new secondary school in Radcliffe in my constituency. It's a scandal that that community has not had a secondary school now for near, well over 10 years. Uh, but we're making tremendous progress in being able to submit a bid to the government. I hope the government will look upon that uh, favourably. Likewise with Presswich Precinct, where we're making a bid to the town centre funds that the Department for Communities and Local Government administers. <coughs> Mr Deputy Speaker, I want to briefly touch on the issue of anti-Semitism. Because it's important to say that not only has this ruptured the relationship between my former party and large sections of the Jewish community, but the consequence of that is that the majority, and this is not an exaggeration, of Jews in the United Kingdom fear they will not feel welcome in this country if my former party under its present leadership were to win an election. And therefore I ask members who are still members of that party in this House to understand the impact of that on people's everyday lives and their duty to send different messages to the Jewish community in this country than they've been sending in recent times. This is a very, very uh, serious uh, issue. Um, I also want to raise the uh, matter of Nazanin Sagari Radcliffe. I had the privilege of meeting her husband, Richard, as many others did outside the embassy. Uh, the way Iran has behaved is absolutely uh, scandalous. Iran, whatever we say about wanting to stay part of this nuclear deal, is a rogue state. It continues to fund and encourage terrorism uh, around the Middle East. Uh, and then, despite this country staying in that nuclear deal, um, uh, imprisons and, and, and treats uh, Nazarene in the most appalling uh, manner. We should use every opportunity in this House to condemn the Iranian regime and to say we are not going to take our eye off the ball until she is uh, released. Uh, I also want to raise uh, briefly the question of HS2. Uh, what I've discovered in recent weeks about HS2 is shocking, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker. It seems that there are a significant number of former senior staff who, as part of redundancy notices, were made to sign non-disclosure clauses because they had brought to the attention of the senior management of the company that they were not providing accurate uh, information to this House about the true costs of HS2. People were marched off premises, people were made redundant purely because they were whistleblowing and saying that this House and the public were being misled about the costs. I urge the Government and the Department for Transport to come totally clean and be transparent uh, about this issue, because if they don't come clean, we're going to drag this information out of them in terms of what I believe is a public scandal. Uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, can I welcome the new Prime Minister's commitment to fundamentally come forward with a new plan for social care? This is one of the great public policy challenges of our time. Elderly people and their family, disabled people and people with mental health problems are being let down. And I hope the new Prime Minister is genuine in his commitment to finally bring forward, on an all-party basis, a radical plan for the reform of social care.